In recent months, Shanghai's economy has become even more bleak. Manufacturing activity has shrunk, exports have fallen, and the youth unemployment rate has hit record highs to the point where the government no longer releases new data. The Chinese government's data is notoriously watered down, but even with this data, we can still see that China's economy is in a steep recession. All the major data on Shanghai's economy in the first half of the year is out, and it's a real mess. The latest figures show that Shanghai's GDP grew by 9.7 percent year on year in the first half of 2023. Which looks to be the highest nationwide and ranks first in the country. Last year, Shanghai's GDP growth rate in the first half of the year was negative 5.7 percent, for reasons we all know. The average growth rate for the two years was 1.7 percent. There will be no harm if there is no comparison. Beijing has an average growth rate of 3.1 percent, Shenzhen 4.6 percent, and Guangzhou 2.8 percent. Shanghai has the slowest growth rate among these metropolises. Let's take a look at Shanghai's six pillar industries. Finance and technology account for 30% of GDP. Technology mainly includes semiconductors, chips, and biotechnology. Real estate, industry production, wholesale and retail, and food and beverage account for 49% of GDP. Finance and technology maintained positive growth in the year's first half, but the other four industries were miserable. Real estate's three major indicators of new construction, completion and sales showed negative growth. The area of new construction plummeted by 28.4 percent, and the completed area grew at an average annual rate of negative 20.1 percent. As for the industrial sector, Shanghai has categorized its industries into 35 major groups. Only 13 of them had positive growth in two years on average, while the remaining 22 industries all suffered a big drop resulting in an average annual growth rate of only 0.5 percent for Shanghai's total industrial output as a whole. The industries that performed the worst were mainly equipment, chemical raw materials, textile and apparel, furniture, metal products and other industries. And most of them either provide raw materials for consumer electronics or support the real estate sector. Because of the sluggish consumption of consumer electronics and the real estate industry downturn, these industries are failing across the board. <sighs> Hello brothers, it's a sad day for me. Today, the boss of the factory I've known for five years announced that the factory had folded up. I've known him for a long time, and even when he was in debt, he never looked defeated. He looked at the machines with tears. He spent 10 years in the industry. This year, there has been the greatest number of processing plants shutting down. Manufacturing factories face a dilemma. When there are no orders, they worry about where to get them. When there are orders, they worry about profits. For old customers who have cooperated for a long time, they worry about the reduced orders, and for new customers, they worry about not being able to collect the money. Cash payments are available for small orders, while big orders bring little profits. Anything with both volumes and profits means a big chunk of money has to be put out in advance. They are taking orders that are worth a few cents while using equipment that costs millions of dollars. They wish to add equipment but have no money. Without new equipment, they get no orders. They want to transition but don't know the direction. Maintaining the status quo means no way out, but they lack confidence to continue the same path. They want to change, but they can't. So where in the world is the way out for the small and micro enterprises? In fact, when one looks at the revenues and profits of industrial enterprises of scale, the real situation of the economy can be more intuitively felt. According to the official data, in the first half of 2023, the operating income of these enterprises amounted to 2.16 trillion yuan, an increase of 10.2 percent compared to 2022, but only 5 percent compared to 2021, so the average annual growth rate was only 2.3 percent. The profit was worse. The total realized profit in the first half of 2023 was 124.3 billion yuan, an increase of 17.66% compared to 2022. But it was only 81% of 2021, so the average annual growth rate was negative 7.9%. It's a negative growth rate with an alarming decrease. Let's take a look at the catering and lodging industry and the wholesale and retail industry. They were hit the hardest by the epidemic. After a certain recovery period, their performance is still stagnant, as the average annual growth rate of catering and lodging is only 2%, and wholesale and retail is negative 3.8%.
How these whitewashed economic figures reflect reality is questionable. Since the anti-epidemic measures were lifted, a lot of people have observed that there were obviously more people in shopping malls and restaurants in Shanghai. But there has been little growth in retail sales, and product sales have declined. Retailers in Shanghai are all complaining about their plight and that it's hard to keep their business going. Do you think business is good this year? Business is not good. There is no spending power this year. It's much worse than before. It feels that people have no money to spend. Is business good this year? No. Is business good this year? Business is not doing well. The competition is too great. It's too much. Too many people are doing it. Compared to last year, is business easier or more difficult this year? Despite last year's epidemic, the business was better. This year is more difficult. Compared to last year, this year's business is the most difficult to do because the economy isn't doing well. Shanghai shopping malls have also seen a wave of closures. What was once popular has become only memories now. The traffic flow of the Pacific Department Store in the bustling Shuhui District has dropped drastically, and many stores can no longer afford the expensive rents and have chosen to leave the mall. The mall looks empty and depressed without retail stores. The Pacific Department Store in Shuhui District, Shanghai, has been playing Sorry Baby on the loop for decades. Do you know why? The Pacific Department Store that loves to play Sorry Baby will soon say goodbye to us. It's saddening. It's reported that on August 31st, it'll close down and say goodbye to us. Many old customers of the Pacific will make the last trip here to say goodbye. Shanghainese have deep feelings for it. As a popular pioneer, Pacific Department Store has made a great contribution to the prosperity of Shanghai Retail Department Store since early 1993. As a fashion icon at that time, how many girls bought lipsticks and fashionable clothing from this store? What have you bought in the Pacific? So why is this song Sorry Baby being played in a loop? Does anyone know? Take a look at Carry4. There aren't many such stores in Shanghai anymore. It's Sunday and there aren't many people around. It's after 10 o'clock in the morning. This is the second floor. Only a few snack stores here and they aren't very busy. This is a supermarket. The price of paper seems still cheap. Now it looks like a warehouse, or worse than a warehouse. Once upon a time, many people came shopping here with shopping carts piled up with stuff. Now no one comes in. In the old days, people used to push their carts and squeeze in. Where have all the people gone? It's not that people are gone, but they have lost their spending power. People simply don't have the money anymore. That's why there are entire streets of retail malls and stores in Shanghai that are folding and closing, and brick-and-mortar stores are becoming extinct. Shanghai Railway Station Underground Passage. It used to be hard to find a storefront here. Now it's 1.30 p.m. Let's look. A lot of stores are empty or closed. Ouch. I just learned some very bad news. I don't know if you've ever heard a burger place called Coles Jr. with a smiley star on its logo. Recently, it announced that the closure of all its stores in Shanghai. Yes, it happened so suddenly. I rushed to search because the news was shocking, and I saw that the stores were really closed, except for the two directly managed stores at the airport. All the other stores in the city are closed. I remembered my favorite pineapple chicken drumstick burger, their milkshake, as well as thick fries. Now there will only be memories. It entered Shanghai in 2009, which was 11 years ago. It's a long history and a memory of a generation of people in Shanghai. I remember that there was a Coles Jr. downstairs at my office building, and every day I would buy a burger after work. Now that all of them have closed down overnight, I feel a little bit sad about it. 我就会买一只汉堡来吃。
I just discovered in Douyin that a big shopping mall near my neighborhood has closed. Half of the stores on the street at the entrance to the neighborhood have closed down, and a few of the ones that are still open are doing well. If Shanghai is like this, other places won't be any better. At first, I wanted to learn from my friend to open a restaurant, but in the past two months, I found that her business is getting worse and worse. So it seems that this year is definitely not suitable for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs to start their own businesses. The physical stores are too difficult. Have you noticed that people, no matter age or gender, have been busy with live streaming this year, selling stuff live? They sing and dance live, dream of becoming a web sensation, and want to make money from live streaming. The physical stores are tough. I thought that the epidemic was over and the spending would come back, but the result is that everyone's pockets are empty. The relocation of companies and business closures have led to the unemployment of many workers, so we can't afford to spend any more money. In the past, my family went to restaurants often and so on, but this year, basically, we have been cooking at home, and we're trying to minimize the expenditure. As many companies and small businesses went bankrupt and closed, a lot of laid-off workers entered the labor market. The number of jobs has dropped sharply. Unemployment and pay cuts are becoming commonplace. All industries are facing pressure, and people are getting increasingly anxious with no hope in sight. How can we Chinese not be anxious? Our economy, for example, is in a mess. I tell you, the country garden has gone bust. The Zhongzhi group has crashed and burned. Civil servants have taken pay cuts. Teachers have been laid off. Radio and television companies are crashing. Where can you find an industry that's doing well? Your various enterprises are even more screwed. How can we not be anxious? Those in the radio and television industry who are in their 50s and 60s have been given a sum of money and been told to go home. How can we live? How can a man in Shanghai live on 2,590 RMB or US $355 a month? How can he not be anxious? What's the point of being ritualistic? Only those who are especially capable can live a good life in this society. So who are the exceptionally capable people? My husband works in a foreign company that did massive layoffs. They give you a sum of US 13,000 or US 30,000 as severance pay. You can go home. What do you think it is? It's too difficult. I went to the U.S. I realized why people aren't anxious there. They're very developed. We drove 50 kilometers and saw no farmers in the rice paddies alongside. It's all machinized production, so we are really lagging too far behind. We should really stop blowing our own trumpet. At present, the number of delivery workers has grown exponentially. Unemployed people and postgraduates have crowded into the industry. The delivery fee has become lower, but the number of customers is decreasing. There has been a serious decline in the number of delivery orders, which makes it challenging for even the veteran riders to hold out. You don't see many delivery guys on the streets anymore. Everyone is smart now and saving money. This is the very busy street of Xu Jai Hui, which is really the city center. And now there are not many delivery guys on the street. It's because there has been too much competition. It's even forcing us, the veteran riders, out. Think about it. How can it be easy to earn more than 10,000 yuan a month? Only so many people will order takeout, and the number of riders has been increasing. Think about it. It's hard to make more than US 1400 a month in delivery now, and even if you can make that much, it's just a matter of putting in the time to get there and pushing your peers into a corner. Let us look at the streets. People aren't spending now. The delivery guys really have a say in whether people are spending. Nowadays, the takeout orders placed by people are getting cheaper and cheaper. The white-collar meals they ordered at noon were about 10 yuan, or US $1.40 each. Not many people are on the street, not to mention the delivery guys. You don't see them much at all. I would like to advise people that if you really want to deliver food, you must be prepared to do it for a long time to make money. If you deliver for a short period of time, let me tell you, if you aren't familiar with the routes, you won't make enough to pay for the expenses. If you run a red light and get caught by the police, you will be fined US $7. If your order is overdue, you will be charged immediately. If your bike is punctured, you will have to repair it, and you will have to spend money again. If you have a job, don't come to the delivery business.
I want to change my job too. This industry has become saturated and it's going downhill. It's too crowded. I don't see any takeout delivery guys on the street. Even if there are any, it's only a few. It's now after 10 p.m. The orders come to a grinding halt. No more orders. It's too competitive now. Also, many businesses have folded. It's too much. I tell you, it's hard to survive in Shanghai. You have to work much harder than the locals. Another industry that competes vigorously is the shared ride industry. More people have entered the online taxi industry, but since July 2023, Shanghai has stopped accepting online taxi applications. It signals this low-threshold industry has now closed its door to the unemployed army. Last night at 9 o'clock, I saw the news that starting July 22nd, Shanghai stopped accepting online taxi applications. I was going to call my friend and see if he'd seen the news. We used to joke together that if we became unemployed, we would run an online taxi, operate a DD, share drive, etc. Well, since yesterday, this opportunity is gone. Around May 2023, Changsha and a few other cities stopped accepting applications. In other words, there are too many unemployed people. Everyone wants to do the job, but the market is full, so it's too late for us. It seems the market for takeout delivery riders should be full too. So for us, we have to be very serious about the jobs that we have and be very appreciative of the work that we're getting. Well, good luck to us. Shanghai is a showpiece of China's economy, and its economic downturn has exposed social tensions that were previously hidden as vicious competition intensifies in all sectors. The sluggish reality in the most developed city in China sheds light on the country's economic woes. China has entered an era of dramatically slowed growth, while unfavorable demographics and a widening gap with the U.S. and Western allies are jeopardizing foreign investment and trade. The picture will only get worse. Rather than a period of economic weakness, it's more likely that this is a sad curtain call for China's 40 years of economic prosperity. It signals the end of China's four eras. That is the end of its reform in opening up. China as the world factory, an era of high growth, and the rise of the great powers. After more than 40 years of reform and opening up, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, has developed an economic system with Chinese characteristics, which is, in fact, a capitalist system of the rich and powerful. It has always maintained a high degree of political tyranny. Although authorities are now saying that they want to improve relations with private enterprises, private entrepreneurs who have been tormented many times realize that this is a temporary tactic of the CCP. While foreign entrepreneurs are pulling out their investments, private entrepreneurs are also fleeing the country. In essence, the CCP's centralized system is incompatible with a free market economy. The latter will likely lead to the disintegration of China's authoritarian capitalist economy. In the face of the CCP's stubborn insistence on the concept of communism, the country's economy may revert to the starting point of the reform in opening up, retrogressing by about 20 years. Such a regression would be a significant event in human history, and the world may not fully realize its disastrous consequences.